<laughs> I can't with you. Hello and welcome back to It's All Good. It's your girl Latavia back for another episode. And this week I am excited, can't seem to stop laughing because I have my friend, Soror, reluctant mentor, my the person I'm an alleged single Black female to, just all around homie who I have not seen in forever. And I got her on video, so I'm extra excited. But welcome. Africa. Applause, 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 applause. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Long overdue, but welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome. Hey, thank you. I feel welcome. <laughs> great. And I'm like, dang, I haven't seen you since Centennial. Yep. Before we knew that <laughs> right. life as we knew it was changing. Right. right. And now all we can do is speculate to how many people had Corona out there that night. <laughs> oh yes it, mm, there was no such thing as social distancing happening nope. that night. nope not a piece of it mm -mm. Like, I mean I was happy that I went in general but after the way everything played out I was even more happy that we were there you know for the actual uh for Founders Day and we got to celebrate not not quite the way we did in 2014 but <laughs> right <laughs> but we celebrated <laughs> nonetheless so yes right. shout out to the stigmas i'm glad i went out for them girl <laughs> and remember we were talking about like oh i wonder what it's gonna be like in 2020 right we were like oh it's six years it's gone it's going down it's gonna be this it's gonna be that oh they they, they better do this that yeah they better be there i mean right. yeah we were way off <laughs> the things we were concerned about <laughs> <laughs> It got here and we were like, oh, great. You're alive. That's what's up. Yes, I'm happy. I was here mm -hmm. for it. Who? okay. We'll try again. I don't even know if 2021 is going to happen. Maybe by 2022, we right. can, we can yeah. come together again. Exactly. <laughs> but speaking of just being happy that we were able to like actually be there together. Yeah. Um, uh, for those listening, you probably have figured out now, I usually start each episode with something that I'm grateful for. So Africa being the guest, I'll let you go first. If you would just share something, someone that you're grateful for. Um, so I am grateful for what I'm not grateful for is my internet connection being unstable all of a sudden. Um, but what I am grateful for to that point is that I have internet. <laughs> hey, like, hey. And I camped outside of McDonald's trying to steal their Wi-Fi or sitting in Starbucks or something like that. I remember um, the days. <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, like if I just but, get close enough. I can exactly. Swimming is the fact that I knew that the Wi-Fi outside McDonald's was different from the Wi-Fi inside McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, but I don't, I don't want to go inside and order. Oh, but I have exactly. I think, but I need oh, to do oh my, this. But no, um, I am grateful for being here with you in this moment. Um, and I'm grateful for, as you said, being that I was in that number when the clock struck midnight on 116 20. Um, and then, yeah, that I, I've, um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm, as I look back over oh, my, my life. life. <laughs> <laughs> and I think things, oh, my life. <laughs> yes, it hits very different now. <laughs> For real, for real. Yeah, but yeah, so he's just like, oh, that's a cool song, but no, I understand. Yes, yes, yes. On uh, so many levels. And you know, I have so many, I'm easily distracted. So today on the radio, I heard a secular song. Um <laughs> secular song. that was yes, it was a secular song, but it was um speed to my heart, Lord. And I was just like, I don't think this is <laughs> I, was supposed to go. <laughs> I was driving I was like I was looking around I'm in the car by myself but I'm looking around at other cars like y'all hear this like is this me 
<laughs> right. Like I haven't listened to the radio in a really long time. So <laughs> like this, like, this what we doing now? <laughs> like, this is, is this okay now? Like, <laughs> is this what we do? Like, I'm not sure. Maybe you know. Mm. I, I haven't I heard know. that one but that's how I feel every time I hear that Queen Nigel song that sounds like a John P. Key song because mm. every time it comes on I'm like okay all I hear is John P. Yeah. Key and I'm like yeah and well, I had the same reaction I was looking around the car like hold 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 oh wait wait a minute <laughs> nobody and else hears this kept, though there's quite a few songs that are like that but we just keep it moving i guess so i don't know why it's a shock every time there's another one i don't i think it's some of them one. because they're just so i guess certain songs are just like so specific maybe or True. or like like oh you you didn't just take the the under like you didn't just take some some uh some notes from it you, you this is it is right. the song you, like the song like how when music had um love and then a gospel group of legit just changed it to Lord. Mm-hmm. Like, so we gonna act like, y'all gonna act like that's not the song that they just changed the word to Lord? Like, cause I think one day I, I, that's, I thought it was Lord first. I thought it was, I thought music took a gospel song. Well, the way, the Lord. order that I heard it no was that I heard music's version first. Mm-hmm. And then it was a group, Trinity 5-7. Right. And then they came out with it and it was, Lord. I was like, <laughs> who do y'all think y'all fooling right now? Right. Because then I think one day I still, I like actually looked at the lyrics because that's, you know, when the CDs, you still got everything with the lyrics written, like the lyrics mm-hmm. written out in a little booklet. And I looked at it and I'm like, they changed like maybe three words in that whole song but already oh okay yeah but um <laughs> I was think, saying that that actually um I would say in terms of that the kind of thinking back nostalgic or whatever like I'm grateful for having been born in this that little I say the sweet spot because mm-hmm. I was around when CDs became a thing and getting to, you know, I, I, I understand and appreciate having to use a house phone and mm-hmm. when the internet started having cassettes and the Walkman and like I am, I wasn't old, like I was still really young. So I didn't get the full experience, but I'm aware of it. Like, right. We had a record player in the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, like there were, there was vinyl records. There was this, the tower, um, you know the like sound system with the cd player the tapes and all that stuff Mm -hmm. i remember waiting for a song to come on the radio recording it and then having to stop so it's like i did all of those i was real young but i did it and then when internet came out so i'm grateful to be i think i guess technically it's a zennial or i might actually officially be a millennial but i feel like i'm pretty sure you're a millennial you just had to say that okay my fault. I mean, anyway, I still, but I identify more with, I don't know if it's Generation X or mm-hmm. Zennials, whatever it is. But anywho, I'm a self proclaimed <laughs> Zennial. Well, and I, at least you, you know what you are. <laughs> because let me tell you, every time something is published, <laughs> I am put somewhere else. And I, I noticed like, that. Really? I even <laughs> saw one where I did not exist. Oh. Mm-hmm. How are they going to cut out the whole year? They cut out the whole year. I was like, yo, I don't exist at all. Okay, cool. Cool. That's okay. I thought the last one I saw that now your generation X. And see, I never or- thought of I wasn't generation X. Well, no, because at one point I feel like they had pushed it back to where y'all were millennials too. And then it got Yeah, they tried it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause that's when I got confused. That was, that was like, I really think that, yeah, I really think that's how Zenio came about. Um because right, it's a, at some a point between X and Millennial. Right. Uh-huh. And I I was in the Zenio part. And mm-hmm. so at this point I'm holding on to it. I'm, I was born in the 80s. Feel free. 
I, you know, I didn't have much time. Right. And I was out the country most of it. <laughs> right. But I was thinking that too. You were talking about the walk and the dismiss and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, were you even here for that? But I'm like, I guess they had it there too. But, but I was either that or my parents did a great, they just neither they didn't uh, update things quickly. I'm going to okay. go with that one. Because <laughs> we had all of it. Mm-hmm. Let's so, go with the first one, uh, Alex. Rest in peace. But I'll take it. Because yeah. look, it wasn't until I was in my, like, I think I was in college when I realized, like, a different world. Most of it aired before I was born. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that, like, I knew about it and a lot of the shows and things that I loved and watched. It was like, hold up right you started before you were born so why do you know how do you know about this like but like I, I will to that I will credit my parents even though right. I couldn't watch a whole lot of things that didn't have anything to do with God or Jesus they made sure certain things right that you about. Did have. yeah and like, that's good especially because we know there's a lot of things you didn't know anything about well but yes you we'll know focus on that right now we'll focus on what you did know I lived a, a semi-sheltered you know uh, yeah, it was sheltered, but you know, anywho, we we gonna focus. We talking about grateful, so we gonna focus on that. And like I said, I remember, I like distinctly remember them being like, "You need to watch this." Like two mm-hmm. movies, Five Heartbeats, and Coming to America. Okay, I could not watch rated R movies. <laughs> Understandable, you weren't supposed to technically. Right, but before I was eight. I had seen both of those movies, like to the point of where I could quote. Okay. So that is impressive. Like how, why, I don't know, but those are two that like I, and I don't think I snuck and watched them. Like I remember they had the VHS boomerang we had, but I don't think I saw that one till later, at least didn't have the full context of what it is. Right. I'm sure they did not have you watching boomerang. I don't know, but they had it. (laughs) <laughs> like the hard plastic <laughs> VHS <laughs> that's the other thing I remember VHS okay and recording shows because when we lived in Turkey we didn't have cable so the only way we got shows and stuff that was going on still like happening in real time people would record them basically making a, a TV mixtape hey. and it would have you know you could put the little strip on it and they would write what shows or what movies right. Mm-hmm. were recorded on it and that's how we that's how I semi kept up with stuff but going back to coming to America like I said before I was eight I had definitely seen it a few times and it is to this day one of my favorite movies before you were eight that's cute and <laughs> it came out just before I turned eight yeah because I think it came out in 88 mm-hmm. yeah I was born in 87 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and also, uh, didn't realize that till later in life <laughs> right well and it's funny the things that you remember because I spent that summer in Atlanta um and my cousin who's five years older mm-hmm. um it was both of us there and like my aunt would go to work we were staying with my aunt and she would go to work and we would just be there you know roaming about things that <laughs> people <laughs> try to call the people on you for <laughs> right <laughs> but that was normal then but it was normal it was something yeah, right no problem um but yeah so when it came time to go to the movies because we always did stuff we I remember flipping a coin I wanted to see who framed Roger Rabbit and my cousin wanted to see coming to America and she won the coin toss oh so that's how we ended up seeing coming to America and I was glad that we saw it um you know, we ended up going to see Who Framed Roger Rabbit later, and I enjoyed that too. But that was a good one. Absolutely. That was a great one. The yeah, whole live animation thing, like, come yeah, on. Now. And that, and at that time, right? I saw it a few years ago, and it still the animation still holds up fairly well. Yeah. See, I haven't seen it recently, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I would say it's aged better than some other things that weren't oh, animated. I was gonna say that. I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, no, I remember, and and part of it, like, I don't really think I knew what coming to America was. Like, I guess I was seven. So, you know, um, Roger Rabbit caught my attention because it was animated. I was still very much so into cartoons. 
Um, so, you know, I, to me, in hindsight, it makes sense that I was more interested in Roger Rabbit, or at least so I thought. Right. Um, but yeah, but coming to America, yeah. I, and I, I remember just laughing and laughing and laughing to the point that now when I watch, I'm like, what was I laughing at? Because... <laughs> I, I, didn't know, I know I was not catching right <laughs> it, yeah it's like even because I think since it, the, the sequel just came out there were it was like um last week it was on some channel like but I sat through it even though there were mm-hmm. commercials but just watching it back it's like I still it's like you had no idea what they were talking about then but I still laughed and it was right. it's, it's like and it's still funny to this day to this day like <laughs> yeah watching the sequel remind so I, I didn't I haven't watched the original version in a minute so I let me let me say this for a minute <laughs> I keep rubbing my head let me tell you I feel like I'm trying to be gorilla glue girl all over again oh goodness because my hair when I got, I got this hair is two weeks old it's, it don't look it looks look good. that's what I'm like look at these braids <laughs> I got frustrated. Did they, I looked did they in the mirror. Some in there? Girl. <laughs> I looked in the mirror and got so frustrated. I was like, I don't know if I should be like excited. Like I got the most bang from my buck, or if I should be annoyed. I was like, because I'm on the I'm on <laughs> I'm on the cusp of annoying. Like, I can't really enjoy this because wait, exactly. not one not one piece is out. Nothing, nothing is piece. Nothing, I'm nothing, like, nothing. I'm like, how sway? The only thing that's out of place is this. And that's because, you know, she made me some baby hairs. And I'm like, I don't need all of that. I didn't ask you for that. I just told you don't braid them up. Because she tried to braid my eyebrows in. Uh, um, <clears throat> we don't need that at all. But yeah, I'm like, like I said, I looked in the mirror and I was like, this, this now I know. Because I was like, my hair has not moved. And I was like, Gorilla Glue Girl. I was like... <laughs> Well, prayerfully, she did not slip any Gorilla Glue. Or I don't think so. It's not glue. shellac. Like, okay. You know, and I know what shellac hair sounds like. I went to prom in the 90s, the late 90s. <laughs> so I know what shellac hair sounds <laughs> like. This ain't it. Oh, gosh. I, I too, understand. And my dad, that shellac. <laughs> like, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't moving. Right. It's a whole shell exactly it's I, that's, I'm grateful that that is not the standard anymore man listen I mean but three hairstyles in one that don't move man my hairstylist does use pump it up and the first time she pulled it out I was like <gasps> <laughs> they still make it exactly I was like I didn't know they still make it and I was like maybe maybe this ain't real maybe this, <laughs> I, I don't know why I thought it you know she but, just had the bottle right but then she sprayed it and it, it landed it. and I felt that that burn. I was like, oh no, that's real pump it up. And of course the smell, cause you know. You know one, that smell. One, exactly. Like it's, somebody it's three miles away, spray some pump it up. I'm gonna smell it. Like, and I'm gonna be like, oh, okay. <laughs> so. Like, oh, yeah. oh, you've been holding on to these bottles <laughs> since the nineties, <90s>, early two thousands. <laughs> cause I have <laughs> not seen it sold, sold in the story. Like made me think about that uh, Eminem commercial. It does exist. It still exists. Right. Crazy part. I think I, I think I saw some pump it up like oil sheen or something. And I was like, I, I don't think I don't think That's I trust not you. how that works. Mm-mm, mm-mm. 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 You could use up you like contractors, I'm pretty sure, pump it up <laughs> in the truck just in case they run out of something. Like when it's time to, to do drywall, I'm sure that, you know, if they run it low, they just ch- ch- is to pump it up up there and be good yeah, to go. Just hold like, it overnight. I'm gonna be back. But to I've digressed. <laughs> <laughs> but I've digressed. So when just, when you see me doing this, like understood, no problem. My hair has just loosened up, so I'm just like, wow, what is really happening here? But hey, just enjoy it. Um, enjoy the smoothness while it lasts. Right. So yeah. So of course, I have no clue what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to America. <laughs> I believe it was like seeing the sequel come out, or you hadn't watched you hadn't watched the original in a while. Oh yeah, it's been a while since I watched the original. Um, and the first time because I watched the sequel, um, <laughs> we'll say I watched it twice. <laughs> um, I mean, because if I'm being completely honest, I was I fell asleep <laughs> the first time. 
Mm. Um, you had me nervous when you told me that. I was like, no, please. My heart can't take it. When I was watching it the first time, when I was watching the first part of it and the second part of it the first time, <laughs> those were two different trips. <laughs> Similar experience. Right. <laughs> um, it made me like, I need to watch the first one because so it so I'm I'm one of the people I was very disappointed um by the second one. And watching it made me want to watch the first one one to get what I was looking for Mm -hmm. also to make sure that what I was looking for was actually there and not just the you know how sometimes the nostalgia makes things seem better right they are um but when I went back and watched it the second time like I watched it in, an, in, in one sitting <laughs> from beginning to end. Um, and I enjoyed it so much better. But I think, and, and I don't know why, and I'm probably getting too, I don't know if I'm getting further into the conversation than you want me to be, but um, I, I guess because my expectations have been greatly changed. Mm-hmm. So by the time I watched it the second go around or the, you know, the first full time, um like it was much more I had like a a much I think it was I just had a much more lighthearted approach to it like there were no it was no expectation and plus I I, I, I'm one of the people I don't trust sequels especially I I was when they first announced they were (laughs) doing a sequel to coming to America I was like for who for for why nobody asked you for this why would you do that we're we're still enjoying the first one Mm -hmm. so there's still nuggets that I'm picking up on right I'm like yeah I know there's nothing new under the sun, but why come into America? Why we got to do this one again? Why we can't find nothing else to talk about? <laughs> but yeah, so I realize I've covered a lot in that and still didn't really say much. So, <laughs> but I, I, well, okay. People listening may not have picked up, but I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm happy that you gave it a second chance and actually, and like you said, adjusted the expectations because. But kind of going back, when you said you saw the original in the theaters, I was getting kind of sad and jealous. Like I would have, one of the reasons I was looking forward to the sequel is that I would be able to go to the movies to watch it. Granted, COVID took that away from me um, and also delayed its release. But when, Mm -hmm. like you said, the idea of a sequel, oftentimes they're not as good. I can think of one or two where the sequel was like equally as good if if not better um and so I was kind of like as much as I'd love to see y'all again I don't want you to mess up what you already did you know it's like don't mess with something that's great um but I was still when I heard like okay it's the original cast like and for so long, I saw in different um, interviews was like Eddie Murphy was against doing it because he didn't want like he doesn't do sequels. He didn't want to mess it up. And then it was, well, no, we're only going to do it. We only agreed to do it because the script was was great, was tight, you know, all of these different things. So I had kind of already before it came out, had adjusted my expectations of it's not going to be mm-hmm. the first one. But I hope you you know I more so wanted to see how they continued the story since it's also it's been 30 you know however long since the original right. came out so it's like how y- that was my thing is like so how are we gonna do this because it ended in a way that if y'all had wanted to maybe you could have done something but it's like how are we gonna progress it so when you told me you had started and you fell asleep I'm like mm, I'm nervous and then <laughs> I had seen some stuff on social media, people talking about it's trash. I had just started, I was like, let me get off. Let me watch it for myself. Right. Um, so when it started. I also think, I also think I should, you know, make sure everybody's very clear, be fair to everybody. <laughs> I'm borderline narcoleptic. So I me following this, I have some things I enjoy. Right. Um, so it's me falling asleep doesn't necessarily mean anything um however I I I remember watching it and (laughs) 
especially by the time in vogue was performing I oh was my like, god i was mm. like what is this this is we the chapters like what what is what is this this is i was tempted cluster. to turn it off at that moment mm-hmm. and i think at that point i was unbothered about going to sleep so mr sandman came right and see i was gonna keep that part out of it but that's how i said i was partially nervous when you said you fell asleep because i knew it it didn't necessarily mean you didn't like it there was a possibility you was just tired and bad timing um right but when i did start watching it like i said those first 15 minutes 15 20 minutes i was like oh my god why would y'all do this like I thought you because in my head I was like mad (laughs) you said the story was good you said y'all did this and I'm like who am I fussing at I don't know but I was so annoyed and I'm like I see why people said it wasn't good y'all doing way too much yeah you called a little bit of everybody to come in and I'm like how y'all gonna do Jones like this (laughs) right I want to have my funeral now. I was like, oh, God. Hey, oh, God. Oh, oh I'm sorry for people listening. If you haven't watched this, there's all kinds of spoilers in here. It's, Spoil it's, been out, right. it's been out almost a week now. Um, but yeah, that well, And part, that's the thing, too, that part of the whole going to sleep thing. I, uh, somebody called me and was like, oh, it's coming on now. Hmm. Oh, so yeah, because you started, you watched it that Thursday. Yes. And I wasn't expecting to, like, I wasn't planning to, like, I was out (laughs) running around (laughs) creating a meal out of a hodgepodge of things that may or may not go together. But you do it so well. But, um, and I got a phone (laughs) call that was like, (laughs) coming on and I'm like, and I was like, oh, okay, well then that's what I shall be doing. And then I wasn't doing it very long into well, yeah. the movie. <laughs> I thought about it because I was talking to somebody about it, like, oh, it comes out tomorrow. We were available. We're going to watch it. Like, I want to see it. And then, like, right before I laid down, I saw, like, hold up. It's available now. Hmm. But it was already, like, almost 11. Mm-hmm. I was like, I hit I like that was what it was I was trying to check to make sure it was included in Amazon Prime and not like you have to pay extra because some things you gotta pay extra so that's what I had logged in to see and they was like it's available now and I was like oh really but then I was like no it's not gonna work like don't even play yourself so we'll just wait till tomorrow and watch it like we originally planned but like I said those first Mm -hmm. 15-20 minutes maybe even the first 30, I was just like, why? Why for did we do this? And then him All the disappointments. All the disappointments. Him him at his funeral. The, the, it was in vogue, salt and pepper. Wesley Snipes and his soldiers stepping or dancing like this choreographed entrance. So at first I was like, what? At first I was like, is this a drill team? Y'all stepping? Right. And, and then was, I was like, oh, y'all the drum majors and the majorettes. <laughs> right. And then Michael Blackson announcing, because at first I thought he was like the person in charge, but I was like, I can't take this serious at all. Um, and then like why are they move like why are they dancing i thought this was an army okay then wesley snipes coming in with his drum major walk and hop like it was funny but it was just like what does this have to do right with any of this and then rotini popping up <laughs> like i was like oh y'all legit just called <laughs> any and everybody man I w- so what i said i was like they went and found all the Africans they could. To- <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, we going to make sure y'all don't say nothing. Y'all was talking about us the last time saying it was insensitive. So I'm going to go get some actual pe- African people to be in here. Like, oh, my God. I was like, this is so bad. And then uh- <laughs> I w- it was funny, but I was kind of mad like, that they did Vanessa Bell Calloway that way. Like, she's still out here hopping on one foot, <laughs> barking like a dog. I'm, 
but they picked up where they left off and I they mean did and so it was like once we got past I guess the funeral and the uh-huh. so-called attack that I still don't completely understand I guess I get it because it was he's mad because you left my you jilted my sister right and all these years her she's still in this curse <laughs> right it was like once I was like oh okay I see what you did and where you're going so it's like it was extra as all get out, but you needed to kind of right address how it ended and bring it back up to speed. Yep. And now we can get into it. And so it was mm-hmm. like, okay. And I had them once I got past that, I was like, I was laughing, like I was laughing at the moments, but it was more of a frustrated laugh. <laughs> and then it was like, then we get to the queen. She laughed and, under duress. <laughs> like, mm, it's funny, but I don't, I don't want it to be funny this way. <laughs> right. This is the wrong kind of funny. <laughs> and then I was happy to see the men in the barbershop, but I'm like, hold up. How come they look the same that they did 30 years ago? Man. So that was my thing. Like the, the exact same thing. Like when I saw the, so when they got out the car, I was like, there go my T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And I got excited. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, hold up. Y'all aged everybody else. And then they went in here and I was like, wait, why do they look the same? Right. I was like, why do they look the same? And then I was like, or did they do do that? I, I got so confused because then I was like, because black don't crack. Don't crack. <laughs> but so I was wondering if like they just looked old to me in the first oh. one because of my frame of reference you know because I was younger um and so maybe they did age them but they still just don't look that old to me because I'm older so my frame of reference is different that's a good Um, point I didn't think about it that way yeah I'm pretty sure that's not what happened but (laughs) (laughs) you out here trying to be you out here trying to Latavia the situation girl but see also let let yeah you right but the same time like (laughs) keep in mind the last thing I had watched before that was like WandaVision um yeah that I've been watching like Lovecraft Country Watchmen very different like I that's what I've been on lately and so you know you know my brain love the opportunity to take off on them (laughs) yeah you was in a whole different world a realm literally for real um so you know maybe it was some of that going on but yeah I I was just like I don't I don't know what's happening here but I was like I'm just gonna go with it um and then so let me tell you how much overthinking I was doing (laughs) (laughs) I was probably right there with you so go ahead (laughs) so the dude getting this haircut in the barbershop I was like I wonder who he is because it was Cuba Good and Junior Mm -hmm. you know in the original and you know he somebody obviously we know him by name right I was like oh I wonder who this is never bothered to go look him up though that shows my (laughs) apathy um (laughs) I was like oh I wonder if he I wonder if him somebody (laughs) right if he on to come up (laughs) we gonna know his name in a few years and then it was like oh am I supposed to already know who he is (laughs) (laughs) okay I'm not gonna lie to you I thought it was George George your friend my friend George yes (laughs) I legit was about to pause it I'm like oh wait I I do know him I know him and then I was like I was getting closer to the screen like (laughs) I I almost text you like hold up you didn't tell me he's and then I was like oh right because he's not not him that's not him (laughs) (laughs) I was really excited like oh shoot I know somebody in the movie (laughs) negative (laughs) i not at all darn that's hilarious but yeah that was that was where i was in that moment (laughs) i feel you and then like so i got a whole lot more of the dialogue in the barbershop on my second viewing because i noticed on my first time watching it i was caught up in looking for the easter eggs of the first Mm -hmm. time right you know so I was like oh they're going so glow poster you know stuff Mm -hmm. like that you know and and like I said and looking at them (laughs) (laughs) like y'all look the same (laughs) as you did 30 years ago yeah 
so I'm like, I was just like, yeah, yeah. So like I said, I, I met, like, I caught the conversation, but it didn't mean anything to me um, mm-hmm. until I watched it the second time. And that, then I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I enjoyed it better, but also, again, I enjoyed the whole movie better the second time. So there's that. <laughs> What was it days go by it was a family matters <laughs> second time around um <laughs> i'm just all over with the nostalgia today um but no i thought too like kind of thinking about the dialogue is like as usual they all in the know they know the business mm-hmm. and like y'all look this sketch know exactly who he's talking about and where you can find them <laughs> um like okay no, nah, the fool was like, you got any kids? I got a, a <laughs> grandson. A granddaughter needs to be a grandson. He can turn the penis into a vagina now. It's science. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that did be, especially the it's science. I was like, are you four? But elderly people are right. like little kids. And like, that what was- made you say all <laughs> like, <laughs> And a grandson is a granddaughter now. <laughs> but that I will say that is what kind of throughout like after we get past that first 25 minutes like I that was I will say that made me appreciate the sequel even more with like how much homage they paid to yeah. the original and all of the little easter eggs that there were um throughout like when um and how they like they addressed it and they brought things from the original but they also acknowledged like time has, right. things have changed it's a different era yeah. um but like the thing that I had like a real good little mini laugh was when Latrell was that his name I forgot Lavelle Lavelle <laughs> when he was at the interview uh-huh. and the guy was like yes I got this Duke and Duke and the camera panned to the pick the painting yeah I was like okay we keeping we keeping the trade in places like call right in there i was just like right oh, shoot. especially because i didn't see trading places until several years after the fact so that whole scene <laughs> in the original was lost mortimer on we're yeah. back <laughs> like, it wasn't until years later when i saw trading places yeah like, oh that's what that scene was about i just thought yeah. it was just random so it's just like I was just excited it was all the little like callbacks to the original that I was recognizing and that like brought me more joy and absolutely and so it was just like initially I was just like "Mm, right darn y'all why didn't y'all y'all should have just left well enough alone man listen I was was mad at Kenya Barris like because you've been talking about this in your writing and this is hmm. Mm -hmm. well and they even the so uh, what one of the things I I I absolutely appreciate it and it made me appreciate the movie more in its entirety was when um Lavelle and Marimba is that his wife's name I don't remember that might be a, a musical instrument um <laughs> but yeah so. I think that's what it was. <laughs> you said a musical instrument but that sounds about right um M. when they were when they were Lady talking, Barbara and they ended up talking about American cinema and they mm-hmm. started talking about sequels and when he got to the part the end he was like making sequels that nobody asked for I was like oh y'all are so smart yes so smart yes okay. and that was, yes I was like okay and that's when I was like okay I'm I'm really I was like I don't know what people was talking about why it was trash like y'all y'all must have not kept watching or you didn't right really, you didn't keep watching or you didn't truly watch the original right that, that was what that I might was be a good point like, too. you didn't truly you're not a true fan of this movie right and you haven't you haven't watched it nearly as many times as I have mm-hmm. to not understand um what they're doing and why like I said I still right. could do without the funeral concert yeah um, but, but you know what that made me think of and I, my bad for cutting you off no, you're good. So really stuff like that, it made me think of Shrek. So, and we know Eddie Murphy was in oh, yeah. Shrek movies. He's Donkey. And I don't know, this may have, this may be related. I might be forcing it. But, because you know, Shrek, they'll do, they have random 
like they oh, like they yeah. turn it into musicals they'll have random songs and dances oh, yeah. and it'll be real songs and stuff like that and they might be changed mm-hmm. um or it might not be but it's like seemingly out of nowhere yet it fits right and then and the movie was, continues right and it was just like at first I was like okay y'all are doing too much but then I was like hold up it was King Joffrey Joffrey like he was extra exactly. And, and he requested his funeral before his death. So right. and he was legit sitting there like smiling. Right. And, like, and I'm like, oh, he probably requested all of these things. Exactly. And, and the fact that Morgan Freeman <laughs> was the yeah. MC. When he died, nobody what was it? Nobody loved. Nobody smiled. They didn't have a say, they didn't make love anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then start crying. Right. I was just like, but what tickled me so did you watch the credits yes you saw he played himself <laughs> always at this point he's right. always I was, like, I was like why is morgan freeman not a character why is morgan freeman the man also morgan freeman the character? <laughs> because only morgan freeman can do that but yeah it was like it, afterwards, exactly. i thought about it i'm like hold up he was the king of zamunda like of course, it's going to be, he showed up in Queens with all his rose bears, like, and so, okay, it only makes sense that his funeral would be just as extravagant, and of course, he can have a little bit of everybody Absolutely. come in to perform at his funeral, especially mm-hmm. since he's there exactly. watching it, so it's just like, okay, and these are people who would have been, they were, not that they're still relevant now, but they were bigger at right. that time, like back then so I was like okay it makes a little more sense they mm-hmm. kept the dance scene you know of like the introduction remix right. the coming the um she's your queen to be we got a modernized right. version of that mm-hmm. like okay I see what y'all did there mm-hmm. but that part when he was talking to Marimbe is that what we're calling her um when they said the whole thing about <laughs> sequels that nobody asked for I was it made me think about um what's that show Kenya Barris just did on Netflix Black AF yes that one where he did that episode about like people talking about what he was doing Mm -hmm. Um, this is that moment so it's like I said it was so many nuggets that I'm like I, I wouldn't say it's better than the first one but I could see it I could see myself watching it again right the same way that I do the first one right um I thought and, about it too. and I did it like I said once we as it kind of like got in it I was like okay I appreciate how you know Marimbe told him or the I'm gonna say his future wife <laughs> told him about his father and like how there's this the tale of Prince Akeem and how he defied and changed the law like he changed things because he didn't want to just stick with the arranged marriage and so I'm like oh okay Mm -hmm. I see what we're doing here we're gonna have it's a lesson in here of like okay literally like father like even though you didn't raise him and you didn't know about him he is literally doing the same thing you did in a different way he's just more bold about it because he didn't grow up here so he is unknowingly being defiant um, right he grew up in america where we do what we want to do when we want to do it exactly exactly um, and so i appreciated that even the and like i said in terms of the getting him becoming his father so to speak of getting so caught up in the tradition and i have to do this mm-hmm. in the well i need to go find this male okay that was the other thing how is having a male heir gonna magically make a war end that part I was like so maybe I just don't understand royalty and such but I don't understand how me going and finding a son is going to magically make you stop trying to attack me no it was because the son was going to marry the daughter so he was it was yeah it was the payback basically for leaving his sister hanging okay all right Mm -hmm. because at first I was like uh you not telling your wife that you about to get assassinated but <laughs> oh okay we have to talk about human version of Rafiki <laughs> and how true to the original 
uh, King Joffrey still don't like Simi. <laughs> right. But him and human Rafiki going back and forth about <laughs> you should kill him. You should hurt him. Like, just do it. Like, just, oh, it's not worth it. Like, <laughs> right. Just, just do it. Just do it. Like, <gasps> <laughs> I'm also laughing because I can't unsee the meme that was like, shut oh, yeah. up a little way. No way. <laughs> like oh birthday twin oh <laughs> but it was like <laughs> before I saw the meme I just kept thinking about uh the grandma in Norbit because that's what it reminded me of like when he played the gram or was it the nutty professor I think it was the grandma from nutty professor like when he played the grandma. Morsh. yes <laughs> 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 walk over here gonna limp back <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah I was just like when he came in I said oh <laughs> so this is what y'all meant when you said we introduced some new characters okay all right okay Different. Right. yeah I was, I was just confuzzled <laughs> but I was like where where did he come from and yeah um uh, and especially because so in General Easy's uh, introduction, you know, they said the inspiration from Mufasa. So then fast forward to this, and I was like, we just gonna do all the Lion King. Yes, <laughs> especially when they like showed the like landscape and everything. I was like, I know y'all were you you came out before Lion King, but we really just couldn't. We now we and then it was other parts. I was like, so we gonna act like we in Wakanda now? Like that too. Oh. I I was like, really? <laughs> next Dorian? Like, or next Doria? <laughs> really? Next door? Like, they from next door? Like, is this really what we doing? Like, I mean, that's like, okay. That's they the made up the like, I hate black people. <laughs> right. It's just like the little thing. But at no. least it's all, it's completely fresh. It's not, right. hey, they from next door. Okay. Yeah, the people from next Doria. Like, no. <laughs> that's like bad Spanglish. But it's like, it's like, so. <laughs> it's so ridiculous that it's almost believable and they say it so quickly and convincingly now as much as I was annoyed by Wesley Snipes character in the whole thing he was very funny in it like and the fact that his braid the direction of his braids kept changing man so let like, me tell you the first watch I was so annoyed I think <laughs> maybe I just didn't understand I, I was just I guess I was just taking it too seriously mm-hmm um, but when I watched it the full time, boy, <laughs> I got a whole new appreciation for Wesley Snipes' work. I'm like, this man needed for real win some awards. Right. He came out here and showed out. Definitely. It actually reminded me of, I don't know how many people have seen it, but when he was in Too Long Food, Thanks for Everything. Yeah, I didn't like see that. That was very much like him opposite of everything he else he had everything done. else and it was very much like comedic like it was serious but comedic yeah. also he was legit walking around in drag like full on but convincingly so but like when he, he was seeing him in in this movie reminded me of that in the sense of like yo he is really funny and y'all need to do more of this and I don't yeah. know who else could have done this right and it been as convincing because when I heard that he was in the movie, I was confused, like doing what? But I was like, I was waiting on some kind of soul glow patch to show up. But they did have Lisa's dad was in there and it was like, you know, the whole opening of McDowell's in Zamunda. And I'm like, he's still riding this McDowell's. And then he said <laughs> at the end when he was like giving him the pep talk, like, yeah, they're trying to take you out. Like, you know, the same way McDonald's keeps doing with me, keeps trying to take me down with a cease and desist letter. Like, but they're trying to say the McFlurbies like the McFlurry. And I'm like, but we put our toppings on the bottom. bottom. And I'm like, they're, they're called toppings. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so we really, and that was the other thing I was like, y'all are sticking with the things. And then even, um, <laughs> I can't think of his name, but the guy that he's like, you know, right now I'm on lettuce. Next thing you know, I'll be on fries. But he was still there work. He was at the opening for McDowell's in Zamunda. And it looked like he might have actually been running things. So I'm like, he's still at McDowell's 30 years later. Uh -huh. I hope he got that promotion. Because mm -hmm. 
whole new continent though i think that's a promotion in and of itself even if you're still doing the fries but you in <laughs> zamunda now, so but i do fry i make fries in zamunda in that whole like all plant-based burger and i'm so glad amazing. they were honest like everybody was like this is trash except for uh the daughter who was the champion for it right she was like mm-hmm. everybody else he was like oh and i was so excited i was like yes mcdowell's for half a pepsi yes pepsi <laughs> pepsi they you know we could do it with coke but yes it was and i'm like i only watched it once at this point so and so i know there's stuff that i missed but it's like there were so many things but then i thought back to the original there was a lot of stuff in there, like a lot of different like yes. moving parts. And it's like, yes. I could see how people could have said it was extra or you didn't need, it didn't take all of that. But mm-hmm. I know the more like the, you know, as I was watching and just kind of thinking back, I'm like, no, they really did stay true <laughs> to kind of the formula they did. of the original. They did. I listened to part of an interview that Arsenio Hall did on um, Breakfast Club and he was saying how I guess multiple people had been asking about doing a sequel but that I think it was Kenya and Kenya Barris and whomever like brought an idea or something to Eddie Murphy and he liked it but then he sent it to the original writers of the first Uh one and like had them look at it and then kind of work it to make sure it was like the the context historical context and all of these different the different little nuances Mm -hmm. to make sure it tracked and then they went back and like wrote the script but it was like I guess they came up with a a story kind of a storyline and then they worked with or Eddie worked with the original writers to make sure it's like okay I like this idea but we need to make sure it it flows and I'm like right y'all did that y'all did that yeah and I can appreciate that yeah because I was like I do appreciate that they you know like the whole thing of like a sequel was not needed at all it would have been fine just no nope like apparently there were some people asking for it because yeah. apparently there was an like Aaron, six people but you know yeah so apparently there was an Aaron Magruder version out there like he was had an idea but that one didn't get picked up so I guess mm-hmm. supposedly some folks ha- had been asking about it we just right. didn't know about it mm-hmm. um so it's just like presence. right <laughs> like overall I appreciate it and so for people like I said I'm gonna say it again for people saying it was trash or it was this you're not a true coming to America fan mm-hmm. like that's all I can say and even though I guess the only other thing I really want I guess because I realized we can we could probably go on and on <laughs> but right. um I was I know um Prince Akeem's mom wasn't in it like but I did appreciate how towards the end, because there had been no mention of her, like the whole movie. Right. I was, yeah. At the end, when um, Lisa's dad, uh, mm-hmm. was like, hey, what would your mom say right now? Right. I appreciated, like, okay, we're going to, you know, bringing her up, bringing her back into it and acknowledging, like, yeah, she was, the, she really is the reason mm-hmm. you were able to go and do things your own way because she had your back and she spoke up for you with your dad so instead of constantly thinking about what your dad would do what would your mom say right and especially because you trying to do the same stuff your dad was doing and the whole double standard issue mess about like with his oldest daughter like she mm-hmm. clearly been prepping for this and you just threw her away like like it was she was trash right you found out you had a son but I was just like, okay, I appreciate it. And I'm trying not to give away the whole movie. <laughs> well, yeah. But we've given away a lot. But that's why I was like, well, yeah, like, uh, my bad. <laughs> oh, well, like I said, I said at the beginning, there's four. But, uh, yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I appreciated that too, the whole how he deferred to her and like really gave her a moment to herself because they, you know, they they gave us clips from the original mm-hmm. you know that included her and I noticed that they had the portrait of the parents of her and mm-hmm. um, King in basically at his bedside right um you know so I was like okay that's what's up but so to give her her moment 
in essence at the at the end I appreciated that I also appreciated it because what I took from it as well which they could have meant it or not that's fine this is what I got um (laughs) It was the subliminal of a, you know, behind every great man is an even greater woman, like, right? You know, um, and basically that, yeah, we typically be the ones <laughs> mm. <laughs> with the good ideas. <laughs> right. We just gotta tell a man so that he can then go get right executed and picked up. And even to that point, because I was curious how they were gonna have Lisa, like how they were gonna play that out. Right. She was. She didn't have as much input as I thought she was going to have in it, but I appreciated that even at, once again at the end, it was like, okay, we're going to call to his mom and have her moment and then allowing, there were like towards the end, like letting Lisa be like, it was almost too, I feel like her remembering, you didn't grow up in Zamunda. Like, right. So that was exactly like, don't, for, like you've been royal for 30 years, but you ain't always been royal. Right. And Mm-hmm. Now, I don't get all the way into Leslie Jones' character, but yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not touching her was, character at all. I was, I'm still a little, still a little annoyed by all that, but I did appreciate because I'm like, okay, it took that or took her to kind of remind Lisa, like, hold up, mm-hmm. you've been here, but you weren't born here, and so right. you need to speak up the way you were doing when you first came here, like, right. And see, when you say you've been here, I thought you were going with the, like, you've been here as in you were situated like he. Mm -hmm. They feel like, yeah, you you have the best of both worlds. You can see it all. You you probably have the clearest view of it. Um, But what I also think about how they handled Lisa was, in essence, she was the, oh, why can't I think of her name? But she she was the Madge Sinclair. Like, she had her moment with a king same way queen did with king jaffe aeolian i remember yes, yes. Leo aeolian. made a point to like say that's it right so and i don't know i love the name so i don't know how i forgot i guess because you know we doing this if i would if i had no reason to think about it it'd be at the tip of my tongue you know how that go right the fact that i still can't remember erica style's character name daryl daryl mm-hmm I was a little surprised they didn't have this. I was like, I thought her sister was going to be there somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you know me. <laughs> so what I'm about to say next is probably not going to be anything to you, but to your fans, they're probably going to be like, where do you find this cycle? So <laughs> not at all. I think my absolute favorite part of the movie was the news the znn (laughs) Um, but and it's not just the news which i was like okay how smart is that to have trevor noah doing the news like right (laughs) i see you but the ticker please go back and watch it and pay attention to the ticker (laughs) okay i was gonna say i remember there being one but i know i wasn't i actually read it I yes, wasn't definitely. reading it enough to remember it right now. They had the stock market. <laughs> they had headlines, like the news. <laughs> and what, what tickled me so was the weather. <laughs> it had the temperature and then it had rain. And instead of it being a percentage for the chance of rain, it said, please. <laughs> Oh, I definitely got to go back and look for that. And it was in that moment that I remembered, like, oh, yeah, I forgot I'm super silly. But, like, <laughs> I, like that's my absolute favorite part of the movie because, like, in, again, you know how my mind goes. Who thought of this? Who who said to do this? Because that's right. who, that, that was the me. <laughs> that, that, like, who did this? <laughs> we going to make sure it is every... But that, it was so much attention to detail in everything like it was just like who thinks to do that like in the more like the more we're talking about it like I said I'm appreciating it even more than when I watched it absolutely like like y'all really y'all took your time you did your homework yeah y'all you kept your word you said you weren't gonna do it if it wasn't true right it wasn't good or quality like okay 
you kept mm-hmm. your word and very I well played. It. Very well played. I, I will definitely be watching it again. I might mess around and watch the original and then watch the yeah, sequel right after. Yeah, back to back, watch it back to back and see how I feel. Um, if I feel any kind of way about it, or if I if it makes me if it it makes my appreciation for either grow or diminish or whatever oh yeah like I said I watched I didn't watch it like full straight to the from front straight to beginning to end but like last week it was on tv and so I was doing something but also listening to it in the background so it was a little fresher in my mind um but I definitely want to watch it again as well as the second one but like I said I there were so many little things in it throughout that it's like it was callbacks to the original addressing things that are happening currently right um and then but doing it like you said in there's so many subtle ways there's Mm -hmm. so many it's like I appreciate that it's funny but there's also a message in it and I'm Mm -hmm. just like and I thought about I feel like there's a lot a lot of Eddie Murphy's movies are there there is a message whether but it's not always right in your face in your face but it's there and it had its kind of oh moments (laughs) um and just like okay speaking of which um at the end when they was talking about special guests all and everybody got all hype (laughs) i was like really (laughs) <laughs> yeah. and his new wife's um like response was perfect like she's like diana ross <laughs> she's listing all these names that would be wonderful and like that they all deem to be great and then it's randy randy Watson. Watson <laughs> and sexual chocolate it's like and the fact that everybody from queens was all like all his people like he and all his people were hype about it Oh, buddy from the barbershop jumped yes, up and like, was dancing. Yo. <laughs> that, <laughs> I was like, this is- oh my goodness. And the, but the one that boy good. Yeah, still all excited, but the other <laughs> one was like, still, I can't believe it. Oh, why? Why are we still doing this? And it's just like, and then Lisa's face was priceless too, because she's just like again this what we spent money on why and the uh the pastor looking he aged and looked creepier than ever yes yeah so the pastor looked like life been hard the pastor looked like so the preparation they had to do to get coming to america's version of rafiki what was his name <laughs> baba it pastor looked like he was the beginning of that <laughs> it was so much so so much uh, oh speaking of which the twins at the end yes just like yeah i so i was just like oh i was like okay yeah all right <laughs> yeah, i was like oh. I don't know how to feel right now. And then of course, you know, I'm like, where, where the, oh, exactly. And then of course, I'm like, where they find them? <laughs> right. And like, then I was like, where they find them? Thirty years ago. <laughs> like y'all got to be related to somebody. Man, that was. But, mm. but see, and then so that made me think about even something you said. You said that um, Eddie Murphy said something about he wouldn't do it without the right script or something. Mm-hmm. Now, how much of that script do we say? We oh. know. Oh, I'm okay. sure it was uh, the script was a guideline. <laughs> it was an outline, especially with you gonna put Leslie Jones, Tracy Morgan, and L- Lunell and um Rodney. Uh, darn it, I can't think of his name. But all of them in a scene together, I don't, I don't know how much of that was on a paper, on a piece of paper. It's like no matter how good our writers are, 
You get them fools together. Forget your script. Right. That's what, I'm sure there were words. It was probably a scenario. The, I imagine <laughs> that that's what you have to do with people like that anyway. Like you, you have to set the scene. Right. And, like uh, this is, he just found that. out. He just found out he has it, you know, who his dad is. <laughs> right. and his dad is a prince. And he's coming back and tell him what he got to do. Mm -hmm. Go. Exactly. And I also appreciated going back to like when he was on his interview, I was like, oh yeah, Eddie Murphy did SNL. You got the SNL connection yeah. with, um, is that Colin Jost? I think is his name. Don't know his name. I was, <laughs> he did a weekend update. Exactly. So that's the thing. I was like, so I know Michael Che and that's, I'm like, ooh, I'm showing my true colors. I know Michael <laughs> Che, but I was like, that's the dude from, uh, from the news on SNL. Yeah, I was like, the yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was that's like, okay, y'all are, I'm like, y'all literally called everybody. A mm -hmm. little bit of everybody was in here and yeah. I heard, I heard Tiana Taylor was in it, but I was trying to figure out how or what it was going to be. Dang. And I was just hoping it wasn't going to be another Byron situation. Um, <laughs> but she played her part. She did very she well. Did. I think she did well too. Mm -hmm. Very, very well. Um, when she was still standing there. Right. My prince told me to stay here. About an hour ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> So listen, I, I was, so I'm about to take us in a different direction. That, and then even with her aunt, you know, who was Vanessa Bell Calloway, mm -hmm. um, I was like, whoa, that's really a different type of woman. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, God, you knew when to have me born and what era, because, mm -mm. because that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's just my brain don't even oh it does not compute the, it does the circle not doesn't compute. It, it just stops spinning it don't keep spinning trying to figure it out it just stops mm -mm. it'd be, it, it be like ain't no ain't no way and continuing this spin we just gone exit stage left like you no know, i was like when wesley snipes was like thank you for curing my sister of her canine curse like right it's like she been doing this for the last 30 years because no he didn't tell her she couldn't like nobody thought they should override this and then it looked like she was done but then she they had a real roll. picked up when they left off like right still wearing a dress and everything hair the same everything look she clearly didn't have gorilla glue because hers had started like falling to the side which is right just too much right as it would if you've been jumping for 30 years <laughs> oof, oof, oof. but yeah i'm just like that is a <clears throat> a trait different that, kind of yeah i'm like that that right there is a trait or a combination of traits that i'm sure several of the men i've interacted with in my life wish i had <laughs> <laughs> or at least had a little more of or some was they wish I had any of <laughs> you and me both <laughs> but that's a whole different conversation <laughs> that's a whole different conversation but it did make me think about um a wedding well it was a a reception but they had their their vow exchange at the reception <laughs> and when they did their vows and she said I promise to obey and the entire facility fell out laughing like, <laughs> oh my God. like even her even the, the the couple like everybody fell out laughing i even remember somebody <laughs> being like now why you get to you you get you get to say what your vows gonna be why you would y'all leave that in there <laughs> you wrote this and you saw it before you said these words but you still thought it was a good idea to right, say it like, out loud Everybody don't knows even that believe. ain't real. <laughs> he don't even believe you. <laughs> oh gosh, that is. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. In all seriousness, <laughs> because I know that we legit could keep going for hours, and there's still so much in this movie that we didn't touch on. But right. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
this has been good. I need to do this. Because like I said, legit have not seen you since right. January. Um, because COVID keeps interrupting my plans to come to visit. But anywho, thank you so much for, for, for joining. Thank you all for listening. Um, if you have not watched the original Coming to America, I have several problems. But anywho, watch it and definitely watch the sequel. Keep watching past the first 20 minutes. Just stick with it. It's yeah. not trash. And I got problems with y'all if you think. Well, I'm not going to say I have problems. I just question your <laughs> fandom and appreciation for the original if you think right. that. You probably do uptight. Right. Like, first of all, let's lower, let's lower the expectations. It's a sequel. Um, but definitely, I highly recommend it. I will definitely be watching it again probably a few more times. Um, I don't buy DVDs anymore, but if they create a DVD of it. <laughs> Who does? Who buys DVDs? I don't know, but you know, I got that special edition coming to America DVD <laughs> that I just can't bring myself to get rid of, even though it does not get used. But I do like, want to get the coming to America crown royal though. I just saw that that it's was a thing today. I saw it a while ago, but forgot about it because I don't drink crown. But I I want that. I want the bag anyway. I don't care nothing about the bottle. Right. I saw. I definitely. So I hope they're still selling it. I would definitely get that, even if it's just for a collection. Right. And it reminded me that I still want the coming to America um, blazers that uh nike released a couple years ago they really Giannis shoes oh um, you know go bucks fear the deer gotta represent barely oh. home always repping <laughs> i've never been to milwaukee but i know a few things because of you hey, you know what i'm saying I, I, i'm like i said i'm always gonna rep my city that's where i'm from i don't care where i live i'm from milwaukee um but yeah you can ask her where she's from. Don't ask me. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Asking you where you from is like telling me to make a decision. <laughs> you don't want them problems. Just, just, <laughs> I'm here. Focus on that. I'm here right now in your presence, okay? Right. But, yeah, you know, I love my city so much. You see, I'm sitting in Lake Michigan right now. <laughs> just floating. <laughs> In my back <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay. I feel like a preacher on a like fifth closing. Because right. <laughs> I've said it. Okay. For real this for real this time. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> the same as with this movie. Like I said, you gotta push through the first 15, 20 minutes because you might be like, oh, this is too much. What is this? Um, I would say it's the same just kind of for life in this whole adulting thing because there's several days I want to be like I quit I don't want any more but mm -hmm. as I continue to learn and as I say every week it's about the process it's about the journey um, and if you push through there's all kinds of nuggets and joys and easter eggs from the original as in coming to America but just in life as you keep pushing through it gets better you then you got memories to think back on like when we started we got the memory of 2014 in dc and i almost you know i was thinking about not going right i but almost I didn't did. come to centennial last right here so, so you, know. you know push through just do it and like i said even though it doesn't look like it or feel like it it's all working out for your good in the end so thank you all for listening until next time hey it's all good <laughs>